Welcome back to another Futures Trading Recap for Thursday, November 21, 2024. The time is currently 8.13 a.m. Eastern. This is Sam at your service, and I trade the E-mini futures primarily. What I'm seeing now is the pre-market trying to push price up above some important areas. If they can maintain that pressure, it could mean they'll gap above those areas at the open, and that's probably a positive for the bulls. On the other hand, the futures have to fight their own areas of overhead resistance, and those come in slightly different than the SPY. In yesterday's recap video, you might remember me pointing out a bearish consolidation pattern that they had developed on the hourly chart. That will be right here, this breakdown candle. And I said at the close, this will typically play out in the downward direction. They did, in fact, fall during the night as the pattern suggested they might. Right here, bounced a few times. At this low, they kind of found a low here near the bottom of that breakdown candle. So it looks like the bulls don't want to let price get below some of the levels down here. Back on the regular session time frame, but don't forget that there are levels above they have to fight through. The overhead resistance that I mentioned earlier. So what does this mean? I think it can mean we might have another somewhat volatile day. Just my opinion. There are no data releases I see scheduled for today that might move the market. But if we do get some action today, that's the reason I don't have a ton of levels on the board. Like always, it's smart to be aware of what else is going on in other time frames if the SPY finds themselves approaching these levels and you're considering entering a trade at any of the levels. Whatever happens today, I'll be back after the closing bell and we'll talk about it. Catch you on the other side. I would say we got the volatility that we were looking for, at least in the morning kind of maybe a 50 or 60 point swing here in the first hour. So let's talk about the trades that were possible. I think it's kind of interesting that while they did gap higher, they messed around for a few minutes, came up within pennies, like two cents away from the operating level. I'll go ahead and adjust it now, 593.59. Short price, didn't hit it here. Not that it really matters because we're not going to take a trade before 945 and it didn't hit it anyway. Two pennies away, dropped like a rock. And so 945, or at 9.45, they were under this level. So going short at 5.90.45 would have been the plan. I actually took that trade, got a few points out of it, and that is done. So do you want to take this trade again? I wouldn't, not on a short trade, although it did work. If you tried to take multiple short trades, you would have done fine here, but you would have not done very well here, and you would have had to incur a loss and jump out at some point. But we'll talk about the next level. So 5.87.36 becomes 5.87.41. And unfortunately, there were more front runners at this level. The low was 587.45, four pennies away, and it took off. So unfortunately, that was a near miss. It never came back anyway, so missed that one. And I already said you're not going to take this level here on another short trade, second or third time or whatever. When we watched the recording of the trade that I took, which was right here, short trade, rode this thing down for a few points. Then I watched them come up close here, bounce up. I think it was around 11, 11 o'clock or so when I stepped away from the computer, shut it down, it wasn't at my computer when they got to here, but just looking at this level. So when they came up close right out of the gate, it didn't really count because it was before the 15 minute window. So there's a chance that they would hit this level, have a reaction in the other direction. We Already adjusted it. What are we looking for? Obviously the four points and the E-minis down here, they never got below the level, but where is your fumble threshold? It is right here, actually 99. 40 cents above the level. So when I'm analyzing this after the fact, knowing that you would have gone short here, playing by the rules, they got above, got above a little bit. They happened to be around four and a half points out of the money when you would have reversed. I think it was in this neighborhood, one of these. And the reversal would have given you an easy base hit at that point. So that level is done. A fumble and a reversal and a wash on the reversal. Here is my trade. Notice the time, 946. The window of opportunity had just opened. And I went short at the level in the E-minis with two contracts. I took one of those contracts off at eight points. And while they're out of the money here, there's no problem. In fact, I was even willing to sell two more if they got up to this area, which I identified. They never got that high at that point, so it wasn't a factor later. So I got my, my eight points with one contract, trailed the other one down a few more points, never got down to this target. But uh, that was $825 on that one trade. And I'll scrub ahead here and show you that I didn't do anything. I kind of was thinking that when they got down to 587, I probably wasn't willing to take the trade anyway. I was had things coming up, needing to get ready for some things to prepare. So at this point, when you see all the levels go dotted, that's just my indication that I'm done for the day. But I kept the recording going until around 11, maybe. They got back up past 590.45, I think. Yeah, 
that was the point I stopped the recording. So no more trades for me at that point. So here's what that morning volatility produced on the daily chart in terms of what the candle looks like. They opened, they gapped higher, which is like I thought they would. Didn't go very much higher at all. They just fell right out of that. And then you saw them fighting the low and fighting the high. And that produced a doji candle. They kind of opened right where they closed. They closed right at one of our levels too. 593.40 was the open and 593.67. So what is that? 27 cents difference. So pretty flat on the day after a pretty big move in the morning. So what does this mean? Well, they still have to fight these areas. We can go ahead and look maybe at some other time frames, starting with a four hour chart. So they're above the 20 period, looking pretty good on the three hour chart. So this uh, fighting they did may be paying off. They may be fighting these areas because this is a kind of a bearish consolidation. This breakdown candle, they're coming up inside it. A certain amount of time has gone by. This is a four o'clock candle yesterday, did fall from this area in the after hour session, found a bottom here, took off. So when they gapped open, they were above right around this gap area, which is one of our levels. So this bearish consolidation was still on the table all the way up until the 1130 candle closed. They closed above this. So in other words, this whole thing, I'll put a line there, somewhere in the neighborhood of here, you get an hourly candle close above this level and they didn't do it here. Let's get it exact. The high is 590.53. They closed at 590.47, just pennies below yesterday. So they got below and this could have been a fake out and they could have gone lower from here. They had the chance to do this, but they had already tested these areas of support in the overnight session. Anyway, long story short, they closed above and they went up higher from that. And that's not too surprising. So, you know, what does this mean on the daily chart here? Where's the SPY? At face value, they're bullish and they could go higher. There's still some overhead resistance here. But they've spent some time fighting the support area and they could be winning. In other words, the bulls could be winning. They could be pushing higher. And we'll, we're going to find out more. There's really, there's kind of in the middle. There's not like a sign of any type of trend change that I see. If this were at the end of a long run on high volume. Yeah, that could be a place they're going to roll over. But they're just currently fighting this area to get above. That's kind of the way I see it at this point. Here are the tracking logs. The first one is the PBR, playing by the rules. Level three is the first base hit. Level four is the fumble and a base on the reversal. That was pretty much it. So here's where you landed. Uh, gained eight points, gave back four and a half. My trades, the Sam's trades log was just this one trade, netted eight and a quarter point with two contracts, $825 before commissions. So that's a wrap for today's recap. Thanks for watching. I hope you found some value in what I'm doing. If you want to learn more about it, read the description below or go to ticksandtrades.com. If you want to try these levels for yourself, there is some information there on how to receive them. I email them out every morning. I'll be back tomorrow morning with new levels and a new game plan. Have a great rest of your day.